Several years ago, after conducting a successful workshop in Vietnam, I was invited by the guy who had booked me, the agent, for a dinner at a very fancy French restaurant. And of course, over dinner, we spoke about more business and more work in all parts of Southeast Asia. After talking about the quality of work, the market demands, etc., etc., we came to the bottom line. He offered me a daily rate, and it's a daily rate that didn't appeal to me at that time. It was probably 25 to 30 percent lesser than what I was billing at that time, and that what was my guiding, guiding rate. He couldn't be convinced. He kind of was adamant about his position and his price. So I excused myself and I went to the boys room. In the boys room, I had a chat with myself. I asked myself, do I need the work? Yes. Is it going to be exciting? Yes. Is it going to be challenging? Yes. Is it going to be damaging my brand? Yes. Is it below my expected pricing? Yes. So I couldn't come to a conclusion with all those yeses and I came out twice as much time as I would normally take. As I was about to sit down, the guy turns around and makes me an offer I cannot refuse. Blows my mind away. He comes and offers me exactly what I was hoping to ask him. Now over the years, uh, since I have been teaching sales negotiations based on neurosciences, uh, I've come to the conclusion that when you offer people silence, time and space between conversations during negotiations. What you do by offering them that time and space is you let them evolve. You let them finish the conversations inside their own head. And usually given time and space, people will come up with something that is mutually beneficial, something that is holistic and also ethical in many ways. What happens at the neural level is that there are, we as individuals, we have three levels of brains. It has three levels. Number one is the topmost, the neocortex, or known as the reasoning brain. I call it the reasoning brain. Then the midbrain, the romantic brain, or the limbic brain, the emotive brain, which kind of tackles emotions and hopes and fairness, etc. And of course, the primitive uh, brain, sometimes called the reptilian brain. Let's call it the reactive brain. So these three brains have a conversation. And they have a conversation about the logic, about the ethics, about the fear behind every decision we take. And after some time, given some time, they kind of align and they kind of come to a consensus amongst themselves and you get good results. So this is a good strategy a discipline to follow, the discipline to offer time and space and silence to people you're having conversations with. Silence is influential. And it's not a technique, it's not low-balling or uh, high-balling, it's neither good cop, bad cop, delaying tactics or anything, nothing. It's good ethical stuff. It's just like what a gardener would do. If he plants a seed, he waits for it. He gives it water and sunshine, then waits for it to sprout. So if you want to be a good leader, a good negotiator, a good salesperson, employ the power of silence. Use silence to influence change positively. How do you do it? Simple, you know, ask for time out. Take a sip of water, you know, uh, hydrate yourself. Or hey, stand up and go face the window, get some sunshine yourself. What will happen in the process is that your client, your customer will go through a similar process and you'll get what you want. You will have him do it your way. That's the way to win. That's the way to be ethical and successful and use silence as influence. I hope you like what I shared and if you like, please click like and share. My name is Raju Mantian. I'm a speaker, trainer and a coach based in the Philippines. Adios and God bless.